What Lies Before You is the masterpiece known as Super Breakout. I've previously reviewed the Atari 2600 version, which is one of my favorite old school Atari games. This version is on the Atari 5200. Most of the games that are both on the 5200 and 2600 are usually different in some way. The 5200 is the more powerful game system. This one comes across as practically the same game. If you look closely, it is a little sharper around the edges and also the motion is is noticeably smoother. Super Breakout is like Superman. Without the super prefix in the name, he would just be some schmuck. Man. And nobody would have made any comic books or movies about him. Putting super in front of Breakout amplifies standard Breakout, making it super by giving you more variations on the standard Breakout theme. You have regular old school breakout in here, which is the basic game where you're bouncing the ball against the wall of bricks, earning points. The higher you go into the row of bricks, the faster your ball starts bouncing back at you. The game gets more challenging, gets faster. It's a lot of fun. Super Breakout gives you some versions where the blocks are descending on you. Also, you have a double paddle version of breakout, and then the cavity breakout mode which has balls bouncing within the wall of bricks that you then break free and, and get a pseudo multi ball. It's like splitting the difference between Pong and Arkanoid. On the whole this is a very nice version of Super Breakout. The big drawback is that the Atari 5200 does not have paddle controllers which in my opinion are essential for playing Super Breakout. The Atari 5200 controller is an analog controller, but it's very difficult to play this game with it. As I understand it, there is trackball support with this game. I don't have the trackball yet. And although the 5200 controllers spin, you can spin the joysticks, they don't work like paddles. Note that when you start bouncing the ball off the top of the screen, the paddle shrinks, making it even more challenging to bounce the ball back when it rockets down at you. The whole thing with Breakout, Super Breakout, Pong, Arkanoid, or any of those kind of games is that you really want that paddle to give you precision. You can go from moving very quickly to very slowly with precise movements. With practice, you can play this game with the Atari 5200 controller, but since the Atari 2600 version of Super Breakout is nearly identical, why even bother? Just stick with your Atari 2600 version. I do like that it tells you how you've done. If you do well, it says good. There's a couple other ones, but if you do terrible, it says oops. I would have liked to see a little more honesty from it, like... Seriously, kid, your game sucks. Why don't you go outside and play kickball? Or do you suck at that too? I'm still wrestling with my Atari 5200 to achieve the best audio and video quality. It's proving difficult. The reason I purchased the one that I did is because it came with a huge lot of games that also had instruction manuals in perfect condition. I use the instruction manuals and artwork for building out my game database on the ClassicGameRoom.net website. And you can see that this is a very well-made expensive instruction manual. It's multicolor for one thing, which increases the cost of printing. Also, it's very well designed. It's larger than it needs to be. And I even have the original owner's high scores in there. It says me, but that's not me. They are incorrect. It's them. There's some nice high scores on there, but I think I could beat those with some more practice using the Atari 5200 controller. As I mentioned, I prefer the 2600 version of this game, and although the cartridge and artwork looked nice on the 5200 version, they removed the astronaut from the Atari 2600 artwork. I used to think I was playing Super Breakout in space, now I just think I'm playing in a black void. <laughs> <laughs>